The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame. My name's Arthur, thank you for joining me as we meditate in Proverbs chapter 12, verses 15 and 16. The way of a fool compared with the actions of a prudent man. The fool is one whose actions lead to disaster. But the characteristic of a fool is that he thinks he is right. So you can't argue with him. Or if you do argue with him, he doesn't take action about it. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. We marvel sometimes at the actions people take when we can see that it's clearly a foolish action to take. But they think it's right. The contrast here that Solomon brings for us is that he who heeds counsel is wise. So the specific thing that he's thinking about here is that we need to listen to what other people say and act upon it rather than upon our own thinking. I recently read in Acts about Paul when there was a riot in Ephesus there'd been a serious decline in business for the silversmiths because many people were turning to the Lord and had no time for his silver images of Diana, the goddess of the Ephesians. And so the silversmiths were running out of work. He stirred up the people and had a great outcry. And so there was a riot in the city. Paul wanted to go down and explain the gospel to them. Here was a golden opportunity for him to confront Demetrius and say, what is the power of this bit of silver that you have? You're here just to make money. It's plain that Demetrius' position was commercial and not and not at all interested in the well-being of a god who was of, of any power. Indeed, they had quoted the fact that Paul was teaching that those gods made of silver or stone or wood are no gods at all. But the other believers said, Paul, don't go down. Don't go down. This is a dangerous situation. People are not rational at this point in time. There's no point having a discussion with them. And Paul heeded their counsel. He did not go down, but soon after left town to minister to other believers. In many circumstances, we find that when rebellion against the gospel increased to a high intensity, he diffuses the situation by leaving, allowing the believers who are of low profile to continue, as it were, under the radar, but to establish the church, whereas he went on to the next town to present the gospel there. But there is a story in the scriptures about a man whose name means fool. His name was Nabal, and he was a rich man, a large holding near Mount Carmel, with many livestock and many servants. He was rich. He was at the time when David was outlawed by the king, and so David was living rough. There were about 600 men living with David who were also outlawed by the king, men that the king had taken a dislike to, and he was after them. And so they lived wherever they could. But unlike the bands of robbers that inhabited the hill country, David and his men were righteous. And so while they were out in the fields, they, they protected Nabal's shepherds and livestock against the other bands of men who were bands of outlaws. The bands of outlaws would not come near where David was because David had such a strong band with him and he stood for righteousness. Well, it's at the end of winter and David's men are hungry. They come to Nabal seeking some food. He sends ten young men up asking, Peace be with you, peace to your house. You've heard from your shearers how we protected your shepherds. Please give whatever comes to your hand. So a reasonable action for Nabal was to acknowledge that David had been a blessing to him and to give David some food, because David was in need. But Nabal's response was, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away 
each one from his master. Shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men who I do not know where they are from? So Nabal, rather than inquiring who was this David, is he worthy of my help, just repudiated him. It was right in Nabal's eyes, he could justify his actions. This stuff was prepared for the shearers. Why should he give it to somebody else? But the action was wrong. And David, feeling a strong responsibility to provide food for the men with him, that his reaction was he would come and punish Nabal for his response. Now, David's response, of course, wasn't justified, and the Lord protected David from doing rash action. One of Nabal's young men came to Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Nabal has reviled David's men, but the men were very good to us and we were not hurt, nor did we miss anything as long as we accompanied them. They were a wall to us both by night and day, all the time we were with them keeping sheep. Know therefore and consider what to do, because harm is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. In other words, Nabal was known as one you couldn't reason with, you couldn't discuss the matter with. And his servant confesses that to Abigail, his wife. Well, she takes action and appeased the situation. She brought food for David and his men, and God judged Nabal. When he found out what she'd done, he had a heart attack and soon afterwards died. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. David heeded Abigail's counsel. A fool's wrath is known at once. But a prudent man covers shame. There are things in our lives which upset us. And the proverb is saying that a fool makes his feelings known at once. He expresses his opinion uh, straight away. But a prudent man covers shame. He hides his feelings. He doesn't let it be known that he is upset. He gives time for God to sort the matter out. When you respond in wrath, you will escalate the problem. You will not solve it. And so if a person is upset and they start yelling, then the response is that you get yelling back and the problem escalates. The prudent man, when he is upset, takes a deep breath and walks away. In this, I'd consider how the Lord Jesus responded to all the false accusations brought against him. Ultimately, at his trial, he gave no defence whatsoever. He didn't seek to justify himself at all. The only words he spoke at his trial were, when challenged, Are you the Son of God? Yes, he said. Are you the Christ? Yes, he said. And you'll see the Son of Man coming on power and great glory. He declared the truth, but he didn't argue about all the false accusations. When they brought a false accusation, it would be foolish for him to respond. That would just lead to an argument. He just was silent. Even before Pilate, he remained silent. A prudent man covers shame. A fool's wrath is known at once. The purpose of these scriptures is to help us think through situations before we actually face them ourselves, so that when we face these situations, we can respond in a wise manner. We can respond with understanding. We can understand that when a person expresses wrath, it can often be a pretended wrath, intended to intimidate, to recognise that a wise person will cover over things that upset him, things that are shameful. He doesn't go about exposing sin in others to find fault with them. He covers shame. To know that when we have decisions to make, we need to seek counsel. And when we have sought counsel, we need to weigh it up and act upon it, not just to listen to it and do nothing. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once, but a prudent man covers shame.